Hi there, I'm Matt Brown from the Mammo Podcast. I'm here at Midnight Madness for the Substream.com. It is night four of the Toronto International Film Festival. Tonight's film is called Livid. Now, it is the Sunday night, so this is the first school night of Midnight Madness. Usually it kind of quiets down a little bit, but based on the scope of this line and of that rush line, there is no quietness in sight. I guess uh, these guys' previous film inside was kind of was kind of a big deal. That guy didn't even give me a bite of his pizza. Let's go talk to some folks and see what they think about uh, Livid. Is this your first Midnight Madness this year? It's first one. Why'd you choose this one? Because I heard it sounded awesome. I was looking for, I was like, I have a night off tonight. I should go see Midnight Madness. And I looked it up, I was like, that sounds amazing. I really want to see this. What do you know about this movie? I know nothing. I know there's blood and I know there's ballet and it's French and that's it. Did you see their previous work? No. So you're going in totally blind, cold? No, no, not blind. On those three things. French ballet, blood. Um, I wanted to see something gruesome, and um, so I've heard that this is fairly brutal. I'm actually terrified. I'm just going because it's the only movie that she had tickets for. Welcome back to Toronto, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. How many times have you been here now? I believe this is my fourth or fifth in a row now. That's beautiful. And you go to all the Midnight Madness movies? Absolutely. Not only is it one of my favorite sections of the festival, but I think it's one of the best program midnight sections of any festival anywhere. I'm a big fan of the previous film from these filmmakers inside. It sounds like they've gone in a really different direction this time. Uh, last night, speaking with them, they said that Suspiria was their jumping off point for this film. And that it's more of a fairy tale, more of that sort of horror. It feels like there is a level of brutality that, that France kind of pushed with martyrs and with inside where there's really nowhere else to go so you have to figure out what else you want to say in the genre and these guys sound like they they really love all of horror not just one flavor so it encourages me and it, it makes me think that other filmmakers may take that lead and, and head back in that direction uh, what are you looking forward to for the rest of the week now here's sleepless night is great i hear the day is really strong for anybody who's watching this make sure you're here for closing night because i've yeah. seen kill list and kill list is insane it's one of those movies that as you're watching it, you think you're watching one film, and when you realize what you are watching, it's too late to get out, and it will hurt you. <laughs> Have you lived in any scary houses in your life besides the place where you work? Uh, my first apartment was pretty scary. What was scary about it? It was about to fall down. My old house was fucked up. She was awake, but she thought she was asleep, but she was awake, and something was just pulling her towards the shower, and she always thought that like, Something in her shower was like fucked up. I, uh, there was a tree once where I was told the, the devil lived inside of the tree. I lived in an apartment where someone hung himself in my room. My um, aunt and uncle in Birmingham, Alabama had a haunted house and I would stay there sometimes. And uh, there was a pair of tennis shoes that had belonged to a burglar who broke into the house that he took off in the upstairs room so that he could sneak through the house un unheard. My uncle shot him. And never saw the ghost, but uh, but we all knew about Mr. Tennis Shoes, and there was a definite uh, vibe when you were in that room. So, well, that is just one hell of a story. <laughs> all right, the line is starting to move on inside, so we will see you after. I'm going to talk to Mike about what he thought, and I'm going to tell him what I thought of Livid. Because these guys uh, kind of patron saints of Midnight Madness. I've been calling them. They're the Daft Punk of French whore. <laughs> So let's hear it for the directors of Alan Terrier and the directors of their new film, Livid! Honestly, four years ago for Inside, it was uh, in here the best screening we've ever made uh, with the wildest audience. You guys. That's true. <laughs> and you were really unleashed, so I, I hope tonight it's going to be the same. There is already the, the beach ball, so I think it's a, it's a beginning. Yeah! Careful! Is it running? Yeah, I think. So that's night four, which yeah. is 40% of the way, which is almost 50% of the way, which means we're almost halfway through Midnight Madness 2011. What are you saying to me right now? My stack of tickets is getting lower. It's true. We're running out of movies to watch. Tonight we watched uh, The Return of the French Masterminds of one of my favorite all-time Midnight Madness movies. Mine as well. At l'interieur, which for you Anglos out there means uh, l'interieur. No, uh, inside. Very good, very bloody. Very, um... Straight ahead. Yeah. A woman trying to prevent someone from coming in her house to do bad things to her. This movie we saw tonight was a completely different direction. What did you think yeah. of? Tell us tell the viewers at home. Livid is one of those uh, brooding and melancholic 
horror movies. A sketchy choice for Midnight Madness, because you really have to fight that movie pretty hard to stay in it. It's a hard movie to watch at one o'clock in the morning. In the final analysis, I think I actually really liked the movie, but it was a lot of work, work to get there. I feel like I have a complex relationship with it, because I feel like I ask so much of horror movies in yeah. general, and I ask so much of the non-existent, inchoate horror movie nuggets that are ideas out there, where I'm like, why can't there be more different kinds of monsters. Why does everything have to be a vampire? Why does everything have to be a zombie sure. or a wolfman? They did it in the 30s. They just invented new monsters. Yeah. And then a movie invents new monsters, and I'm so spoiled that I'm like, eh. There's a girl and a couple of her friends who find out that there is this mansion with a nearly co unconscious comatose old lady in it that it might have a treasure in it, and they decide they're going to go on Halloween, no less, and try to find this treasure, which means that this is, by definition, a stupid people making stupid decisions movie. But when it finally arrived at its point, and it, it got there after a long time, an hour into it, when it really sort of made it apparent what the story it was trying to tell me actually was, I was like, well, then the, now there's actually some creativity to the way they're trying to scare me. It's got wonderful designs, like production designs and just concepts. Like, I mean, I think these guys owe Guillermo del Toro a big bottle of whiskey. It's really inflected by his stuff. If I was smarter or if I knew more about the history of these kind of intelligent horror films, like the filmmakers referenced, you know, Dario Argento a bunch of times. Yeah. I feel like if I, if I knew more or was smarter, then I might get the subtext, because there was a lot of subtext. This is I a... guess one of the biggest problems is spending so much of this movie, like two-thirds, with characters who are making inexplicable decisions and about whom you know nothing. Yep. So you have no sympathy because they're morons and they're strangers. Yep. And strange morons are difficult to hang a movie on. That being said, it does tie it up through a series of incredibly gruesome murders. Yeah, scenes. when it gets going, like I said, pretty cool it's very inventive. Movie. Yeah, I'm giving it the, the thumbs up, ultimately. Okay. Yeah, and I'm giving it the thumbs I wish I was smarter. Okay. What are you coming back to do for us next time? I'm going to do Smuggler, I think, on Friday night is one of mine. I'm really looking forward to that. Look who wandered over here. Kurt's here. Hey, Kurt. Hello, gentlemen. He's going to be you tomorrow night. All right. Good luck. They're a tough crowd. They're not. They're sweet. They're very, they're puppy-like, even. What are we talking about?